Subhanallah, a lot of times today, if somebody swears in the name of Allah, you know he's lying. Because if it was the truth, why does he feel he has to swear? Subhanallah. So the opposite. People should swear by Allah because they're saying the truth. And now we see in our communities, in our societies, they mention the name of Allah because they want to hide their lying against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing for us. We have to fulfill the promise. These are building of the society. This is where, if we look at the beginning of the ayah, Let me tell you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. And you notice here, it didn't talk about the beard or the dress or all these things that now they teach us, if they want to teach us about Islam, they come and tell us about this, subhanAllah. When a new Muslim wants to, a new person wants to revert to Islam, the first thing they tell him, change your name. Where did they get this from? Did the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever ask anybody to change his name? Wasn't Abu Bakr and Umar and, and, and all are kafir and then they changed? Did once the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ask anybody now that you are a believer, come and I change your name? And yet we feel the most important thing is change somebody's name. Rather than teach them the halal and haram. This is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala haram. So we, uh, we start by telling them don't eat this and eat this and leave the things that's important to the soul. Leave the real things that's important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us Allah tushrik bi shay'a. Do not give a partner to Allah. This is the most important thing. But we take it as words. We teach the newcomers la ilaha illallah. Just say the word and you're saved. Subhanallah. And yes, inshallah they're saved. But the word means much more than words. We believe and act on it and live it. Then that should be shayla. So here, these are the things that we have to teach Muslims. Teach ourselves and then teach others too. This is what true Islam is about. Take care of our parents. How many times? Uh, 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 as the Rasulullah says, take care of your parents, your children will take care of you. Subhanallah. Very simple equation. You're worried about what happens to happens to you when you grow up? Take care of your parents now, subhanAllah. Then the parents uh, will take care of you. Very simple equation. And we said this before, where the, uh, the, the grandfather was living with the family and he breaks the china all the time. So the son decided the best thing is to buy a wooden plate for the, his father so it doesn't break. And when he takes his son to buy the wooden plate, Children are very perceptive. He asks him, why is this there? He says, this is for your grandfather. You see how he keeps play, uh, uh, breaking the china plates all the time. He said, very good idea, Dad. This would last so when you grow up, you can eat from the same plate. This is how it is. Kama to dina to dad. This is what's good for us. Subhanallah. And we see in this community here, they put their parents in all folks home only to the children do the same thing to them. This is how life is. We invest in the future. Invest by taking care of our parents and our children will take care of us. After La ilaha illallah, it is the parents. That's how it is. Yeah, we want to buy insurance and we think the real estate, if we buy real estate and we have a lot of money in the bank that's going to protect us. It's so only for our children when we grow up to say we're senile and they have to take the money themselves. That's what happens with all this money we collect. Why? Because we didn't invest it in taking care of the parents. This is the Islam that we have to teach ourselves and have to teach everybody else.